Well, on this misty morning, I'm here at the <laughs> Rogerson Clematis Garden. I'm here with Linda Butler. And so we are going to be talking about clematis because it's that time of year that we want to pay some attention to them. Yes. So we're standing in front of a garden that looks absolutely pristine. Tell me what you guys are doing here. This is a part of our beginner's garden. We have two beds devoted to clematis that have been identified by the International Clematis Society as being really stalwarts, ironclad, idiot proof clematis for people who haven't grown them before which is a great idea yeah. if you love them but you don't you're not comfortable with them these are great selections you can go from. to their website which is clematisinternational.com and download the list and there's about 60 plants on it wow and these have been vetted from all over the world and it looks like you guys have pruned already though yeah, right yeah yeah so we've, me we've done a here. lot of the pruning here and so you can see this is a clematis vitacella form this is abundance it's been cut down very short yeah. and it's abundantly responding it is already growing. now <laughs> this plant was actually so huge last year that it completely covered its little tutor and would, had blown over. Wow. So we cut it back to the short new growth and, and you can see this one likes to run a little bit and sucker, but it's already recovered enough from last year's pruning that it's gonna flower right on time this year. Wow. So it was pruned when it was done flowering. This would have been pruned in late May or early June because this is a, an early spring variety. This is Alpina Pamela Jackman. People don't think of these varieties as reblooming, but they do. Really? Yeah. And so you notice we've already fertilized. Yep. When it's done flowering, we'll fertilize again and it will rebloom. And will you be cutting it back too at that time? Not or just this one, but we, we have been known to give um, abundance a Bastille Day chop. <laughs> if it flowers, if it flowers early, if we have a hot early summer, uh -huh. it'll flower early. And then when it's done, we come out and we cut it back again. So some years this gets hard pruned twice. Wow. And then you've also over here, let's, let's take a step over yeah. here, Linda. You've got some stuff that you're showing yeah. here. Tell me about this and, okay. and your theory. So on this pruning. is a bed we haven't gotten to yet. And this is a large flower hybrid called Matka Teresa from Poland. And I just want to stress to people that you don't have to save every living bit <laughs> of the clematis that has leafed out. So we've got a nice long piece here um, that's coming out of the ground, and we have a wimpy little bud, right. and we have a pair of much more viable buds. So rather than allowing the plant to waste a lot of time trying to reinvigorate this, we just make a cut right there this one has its pair back here and then there are some pieces that we've let stay longer so they get up in their support plant and this is how we suggest most people grow clematis is find a nice shrub in your garden that needs a partner and clematis and roses are great because you can prune them at the same time. Right, right. Yeah. And, and, and if you prune wrong, timing wise, it'll just mean that they're going to bloom later like right, roses do. Right. And also, I wanted to ask you about this here and just show okay. people this. This is interesting to me because look, it's blooming. It's already bedded out way right. down here too. Yeah. But your theory is, no, go back to the sturdy stuff. Yeah. And you're, you're not going to hurt the plant. Yeah. The bud that we left is a nice pair good and strong starting already to leaf out so let's not waste the plants time right. and our time um, with a lot of weaker growth let's and focus that growth where it's going to do the, the most best. good yeah. and then you know one of the things that i've heard all my life in, in in the gardening world is that you know they love cool feet shade uh -huh. and then sun on top so yeah. that's why you say pick pick a shrub Right. There, and then uh -huh. I'll give them both. Yeah, yeah. Because we're southwest exposure as we're standing here. And so this gets early shade from the big uh, boxwood and then the afternoon shade once this is leafed out. Wonderful. Now, Linda, also, I am so delighted that y'all are going to be at Garden Palooza this year. For the first time. Oh, really? Yeah. So let's go inside the greenhouse and get out of the rain and look at some of the things y'all are bringing there. Okay, okay? great. Let's go. All right, Linda, we're out of the rain. It's not a lot warmer in here, Yay! but we're out of the rain. Yeah. So this is just a few of the different varieties you guys are bringing to Garden Palooza, right? Right. We're really excited about the selection that we have this year of Raymond Evison's short-growing clematis. He calls that his, I think it's like 
his Boulevard series or something <laughs> like that. But they tend to flower pretty short. This is Abilene. It's a very rich pink. Um, and we've also got uh, a lo lovely lavender blue one, a uh, very pale color, but really nice long flowering period called Bernadine. So we'll bring Bernadine too. So if you mean shorter, then they might work well in containers. Oh, I would think. absolutely. Perfect. That's why he's bred them for Perfect. small gardens and containers. So then our earliest Montana to bloom, both in the garden, we actually put these outside to slow them down and they went, no, we're flowering. <laughs> this is Tsunami Child, which was bred or selected by Dr. Mary Toomey, who wrote the Illustrated Encyclopedia of Clematis. Beautiful. And so this is a selection that she made out of her garden in Dublin. And what's wonderful about it is that um, as the flowers mature, you'll have paler pink and darker pink. So it really is just kind of this fluff of cotton candy. It's not candy. just one color. Yeah, it's, a, it's a variation right. of colors. Nice. I do love this. Yes. You know, we don't have a lot of variegated or color foliage uh, clematis in the genus. So when we see one like this, we kind of run around with our hair on fire. <laughs> this is um, Stolwit Gold. It has a very simple little blue clematis alpina type flower, but it holds this gold color Ooh. through the summer. So feed in the shade. We have it planted in a viburnum tinus hedge. It comes over the top and just coats it with gold through the summer. And then occasionally you get these little blue flowers. And the blue against that but would be yeah, breathtaking. Yeah. And nature did that all by itself. And then tell me about and this. And then one. this one has just, as it's so well wow. named. This is Lagoon. And it really is kind of a waterfall or a pool. If you don't let it climb, it just becomes this beautiful blue ground cover. Wow. Uh, so uh, lots of folks use this type of clematis as a cover for their spring bulbs. So this is going to leaf out and flower. And then your bulbs are going to come up. And then this will cover them dying back. Because wow. you have to leave your daffodils and tulips yeah. in the ground. Yeah. So you can use clematis to sort of cover that clutter. Perfect. And then they'll rebloom in about August or so. Well, there you go. You know, we are so excited to have, uh, have this wonderful group of plants available at Garden Palooza this year. But we also want to encourage you to come on out to this garden and see all of the beautiful plants and talk to the great information you can gather here about the clematis in your own garden. So for more information, always, we invite you to go to gardentime.tv. Thank you so much, Linda. You're welcome.